Today I have a 1958 Admiral model T21 E21 uh, in for repair and this television has an interesting history. It's uh, somewhat personal and uh, this television set was one of the very first that I ever obtained which helped me uh, get into the vintage electronics hobby and it was uh, in a storage unit behind a uh, business I had at the time. This was back in 2000 and what was it, 2001 or two or something. And uh, heard all this racket out behind my business and uh, went out uh, outside to check and uh, on the other side of the chain link fence there was a store all uh, over there and uh, there was this woman with three storage units open and she had a helper with her uh, fill in a big old trailer with all the stuff in these units and what I noticed three of these units were packed to the ceiling and all the way to the door with basically everything I just uh, all sorts of stuff electronic stuff books newspapers uh, but when I looked in there from uh, across the fence I could see some antique television sets and this was one of them that I could just see that sticking out in one corner. The rest of it was covered in uh, old magazines and newspapers. And uh, anyway, to make this story as uh, short as possible, uh, I made a deal with her. I said, uh, uh, bas basically, I'd help her out um, cleaning the storage units out if I could have what was inside. And she thought I was a little angel, and uh, we agreed. And uh, I ended up with several old TV sets. This was the coolest of the bunch, and. Uh, I sort of cut my teeth on on this. Uh, now, jump ahead about, what has it been, about 15, 16 years now. Uh, this TV set I sold off to somebody before I moved to California. And it, well, that person uh, used it for a while. It started to develop uh, problems and has since come back for repair. So <clears throat> basically the complaint was that the image wasn't stable and uh, the young lady, um, if you actually go to my website uh, stellar-tv.com you can see her, she's the model for my line of masterwork color conversions and uh, so she brought this TV back in and told me that the image was unstable and I plugged it in at the time and, and uh, you know I could see that you know, I think it was uh, I think it was the vertical circuit. Anyway, uh, I'm just now getting it on the bench to look at it. So what we're going to be going through is a lot of my <laughs> uh, early attempts at repairs. Uh, I did recap this set at that time, and uh, we'll have to see how everything has fared over 15 years. So let's... Uh, plug this in. As I recall, everything worked. We'll get an idea of uh, what, we're, what we're up against here. I remembered this tuner was kind of gimmicky. You have to wiggle it around to get it in the right spot, but uh, maybe we can try to fix that if I need to take it apart. I can hear the high voltage come up. Oh. Uh huh. Okay, it looks like it definitely wasn't doing that when I checked this out a couple of months ago, so this is a new problem. Uh, it looks like what we're dealing with, see how when I advance the brightness control, the picture comes up and then sort of blooms out? That is trademark bad or gassy uh, high voltage rectifier. This set uses a 1B3 uh, or 1G3. So we've got to address that issue. And vertical. We're 
just looking at a detune channel. But uh, I see a couple of problems. It's horizontal is uh, starting to pull in on the side. That's new. And I don't know what we're looking at. Something is riding the picture up and down, some sort of interference. And if we have a a uh, any sort of a parasitic waveform or oscillation right in the vertical waveform and definitely throw off the vertical oscillator it seems to be the case here but uh, let me get a, a uh, test pattern fed into it and get a better idea of what's going on I, I don't know if we can Okay, I need a matching transformer. Let's see what we've got on the back here. Oh no, there's one on there. Pause it while I hook it up. All right. The cable hooked up and... Uh, oh. Oh, I'd recently moved this and I never plugged it back in. Hot dog. This is the problem. I'll run this correctly later for now. Let's just get it plugged in. Okay. It seems to have stabilized. I still have to check it. But uh, what are we looking at here? We're looking at heavy interference. It's on the wrong channel. I really don't want to touch that. I know it's going to be hard to tune. looking at. I'm sure the TV's on three. And then this. Okay. So we're on three on the generator. <clears throat> and what we may be looking at is a heavily desynchronized picture. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I think I can kind of see something there and we're on crosshatch uh, and there sure is a lot of of uh, color noise in the picture those little dots but uh, let's see if I can adjust the horizontal hold out doesn't look like it, it just looks like it's severe sync issues on this set. It's about as good as I can get it there. Let's try. Yeah, I can hear the frequency going way off. Let's just get it close here. Huh. Right there, I think you can kind of see it, but it's it's got all these 
lines overlaid on it. Let's try a different pattern. Dots. Nothing. Okay. Let's try good old fashioned color bars. thing is just not going to synchronize. That's the closest I can get it. But it does appear that the vertical is somewhat stable. I mean, it's like somewhat I'm being somewhat hopeful too. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Closer. We're still on color bars, if I recall. That's pretty bizarre for color bars. It's acting like the. I don't know, maybe we have a AFC that's, that's uh, turned too far up, or it's just. It almost looks inverted, doesn't it? Like the blacks and the whites are inverted. It's, it's, uh, remember if this has an AFC on it or not? I think so. That's not it. It doesn't do anything. All right. It, it just looks to me like we've got color bars there, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's almost, you know, it's over multiplied. It's, there are far too many rasters. One, two, three, etc. I've never seen that before. So, let's uh, get the cover off this thing and uh, check it out a little further. Boy, this brings back memories. I remember going through this TV set uh, many, many years ago, and uh, even labeling all these, uh, all the tubes on the chassis, and and uh, trying my hand at replacing that uh, selenium rectifier there with a diode, and then having the cap blow up in my face because because uh, of the polarity on the well, the polarity on the selenium has is marked by a plus, and that actually. Uh, corresponds to the cathode on a diode. So of course I hooked it up backwards and this voltage doubler cap went off like a shotgun right next to my head and uh, made my ears ring for about an hour. Anyway, I do remember in an attempt to figure out a horizontal phasing issue at that time I uh, was going through and trying to replace a lot of the uh, the mica caps and I do remember coming up with values for these that were approximate, uh, but the picture would synchronize. I think it would be a good idea to go and replace those with a proper value now while I have it in the shop. So uh, that would include this, this one, and I think that's it. Those are the two that I substituted. The problem turned out to be this horizontal AFC diode here, uh, but uh, I'll get a better light on there for you. It's just a couple of 1N 4000 series diodes. Uh, some guys will tell you to put fast switching diodes in there, but uh, general purpose is just fine. Um, you know, the, the diodes uh, that are designed for uh, 
fast switching are designed to switch in the megahertz range usually and we're dealing with you know horizontal um, uh, oscillator here is running about 15.75 kilohertz so uh, never had a problem with the general purpose diodes so uh, I'm just gonna start off just uh, testing some tubes here so the vertical output. Uh, let's see. Audio detector 7AU7. Forget what that is. I think this is the horizontal oscillator here. 6CG7 or something. Yeah, 6FQ7, which is basically a 6CG7. I like to do a shorts and a grid emission test before the tube's warmed up and after it's warmed up. So that section's good. That section is good. And uh, that tube appears to be okay. Oh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's the first test. All right. Okay. So that's not our problem. Uh, AGC keying and sync separator here. This is the uh, 3BU8. That could also be an issue. I don't think that is a tube that's going to be marked out on here. Let's look in the book. Three volts, socket 21, sensitivity 92, and we've got two tests. So we'll do three volts, socket 21. Oh, look, they list a 6BU8. You know what, that, uh, I don't ever recommend going by the good and replace um, demarcations on uh, on these tube testers. I, I really think that that little bit that that's below the questionable area is, is perfectly fine. I, I've had tubes that checked weaker than that, that operated in their respective circuits just beautifully. So uh, I think that one is uh, going to get a pass from me. So we don't seem to have any tube-related problems in uh, any of the obvious circuits. I might just have to get down. I'm going to go through and check the rest of these tubes anyway, including the tubes in the tuner. They could be, uh, could be the source of the problem. Well, I got the back cover off now, and, uh, you know, none of the tubes checked bad. Uh, at least there was nothing really obvious. Uh, so I got the, anyway, pulled the cover off and uh, <laughs> I've got a little shaving mirror here. My regular bench top mirror slid behind the bench once and broke. So this, we're just going to have to use this in the meantime. And I want to go ahead and check the 
B plus on this. There are a couple of test points. I've got my little cheapy Vellum and VTVM here, or uh, VOM here. I don't like to use anything exp expensive uh, on uh, tube circuitry. So we're at 142 volts on a 150 line. That's acceptable. And here's a 260. And we're at, uh, as you can see it there, 240. That's a little low. I don't think it would be causing our problem, though. So I'll have to go through and check some of these components more comprehensively. But I will show you what I'm talking about with the tuner. This, uh, this thing is uh, kind of... See, it's kind of freewheeling a little bit. This thing wobbles back and forth. And I tried to fix it with the limited tools I had 15 years ago, and it just wouldn't, wasn't having it. Uh, so we're still dealing with this. Try to get it to synchronize. No synchronization. For the heck of it, I might actually try changing the horizontal AFC diodes out of this. See what happens if we just pull them out completely. Yep. Focus in on that. No, it's not having it. But we've got a. Uh... Come on now. It's the day I get a real handheld camcorder. Anyway, uh, these uh, diodes are in series. Most of them have a co uh, common cathode, but these uh, this set uses a uh, two in series. And uh, that seems to have yielded us. Nothing. I do notice there's no difference. I heard the frequency change when I unplugged the diode, but uh, the action is exactly the same. So what the heck? Uh, let's uh, put some new diodes in there and see what happens. Day number two on the Admiral. Uh, I found out something really interesting. Uh, I had... Uh, just another quick story. I had... Uh, a TV for sale on my website. It was a, a Stromberg Carlson TV 12. And a uh, guy wanted to trade me a tandem predictor for it, so I told him, yeah, I'll pull this thing out of storage and kind of, it's been in there a while. I'd put it on the bench, check it out, make sure everything was up to snuff on it. And, and uh, so I get it out and I plug in my trusty NTSC generator and I find that I had basically the same problem as I was having on the Admiral. So, what do we find out? I uh, plugged in a standard VCR, and uh, lo and behold, we get a perfect picture on the Stromberg. So, now, we're going to be running an actual signal back into this, and uh, hopefully we can make some headway with it. So, <laughs> let's find out. Put the thing on. See if we have that. See, this thing is pretty cold, so I imagine it's going to take forever to warm up. Look at that. I haven't touched that uh, high voltage rectifier yet. We might still have the blooming problem. Mm, yeah. Eh, not too bad. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's still blooming out a little bit. So at least we have some semblance of picture now. But it looks like horizontal is a little unstable. And how's our vertical? Vertical is locking in. 
Can't quite tell what we're looking at though. Looks like we have a horizontal phasing issue. It looks like it's shifted too far to the right and folding over on itself. Let's try to adjust the hold control. Fix your slips. It's still really, it's lighter on the camera than it is in person. I can barely see it looking at the screen. Uh, that. Yeah, some sort of strange phasing issue. But it's a step in the right direction. I think I'm starting to get a grasp on the original complaint. Let's figure out what that blooming problem is, and then we'll tackle the horizontal uh, circuit. So we could have a weak picture tube. When we crank up the brightness, uh, too much current's being drawn, and uh, it's uh, causing a high voltage problem. Or, like I said before, it could be the uh, high voltage rectifier tube, or even the horizontal output tube could uh, could be folding up with the demand, so uh, let's check it out. a visual inspection. I think tube tester is not something that I would trust on a high voltage rectifier. These things usually just need to be checked at yeah, with a load on it. Come on. But uh, you know, I think I have another tube hanging out here. I don't know if it's any good. <laughs> I can hear that thing arcing over there. Or actually, I can hear the corona I'm trying to discharge on it. I think that would have been a neat video too. I didn't really think about it, but let's focus on this for now. Okay. Let's see if that made any difference. Wow, that's even worse. Either that tube is bad or, well, that's got to be the case. There's absolutely nothing there. Nothing, nothing. Not even a dot on the screen. So much for the, uh, tube rolling around on the bench top, which I have no idea where it came from. I have another chassis here. I'm just grabbing stuff that I know is sitting around rather than dig through boxes. But we might have to do that. We'll see. Okay, tube number two. Oh, 
Here it is. That is a pretty big improvement, I think. I can live with that. It's not blooming now, at least. It's still kind of dark. I'll let this thing warm up a little bit. So, okay, it looks like we uh, we have a still have a horizontal issue here on the right hand side as well as the left. So we have either a problem with the horizontal drive or uh, insufficient B plus to the horizontal output tube or a weak horizontal output tube or some other problem thereabouts. This thing has a horizontal drive adjustment on it. I don't... Yeah, if I remember correctly, this is the drive adjustment here. And, uh, I, but that, that memory is, uh, that's an old file. That's going back to when I first worked on this set 15 years ago, but I, I tend to remember that that was the case. Mm. Let's see how this is doing. No horizontal hold. Yeah. Let's try this. I made up another dual diode here. I was trying to figure out the problem with the, turned out to be the signal generator. Uh, let's put the original diodes back in. Where are they? If I even have them. They're so small they could have gotten swept down onto the floor. The diodes were just installed backwards. Uh, I'm still looking at a width issue here. Way on that side. Yeah, we're short on that side. And uh, you see how, notice the detail on, uh, on a lot of the bright areas. You see how it's uh, kind of snowy? Uh, yeah, it looks, uh, looks like it's glistening. That usually indicates that uh, uh, we've got a gassy CRT. And uh, it could also be a gassy video output tube or something. You know, that, uh, at its worst, that tends to manifest itself as a um, the the whites and the blacks will invert themselves, and uh, you'll end up with a negative picture. This I'm tempted to leave alone. We got plenty of brightness, but there's definitely some gas in there. So. To figure out this width problem, I think we'll be all right. Good lock on the vertical hold. Good contrast, good brightness. Where are we on the width? Some of these goofballs used a cheap kind of a sleeve that just slid into the yoke to inhibit the deflection field. I don't know if this uses that or not. If it does, it's not there. But uh, height, vertical linearity, width control. Don't see it. It's not evident. It could be the horizontal drive control. Let's give that a turn. We'll be real scientific about this. Uh, okay, it seems to have pulled it in somewhat. Mm, yeah, somewhat of an improvement. All good. 
should, uh, well, actually, yeah, not really. A little, little, little bit, not to, enough to make a difference. I think we need a proper width control. It's cranked all the way open. Yeah, look at that. That's uh, giving us some instability. Just put it back where it was. Which is about right there. Ideally, horizontal drive control should be adjusted. If you're... It's kind of critical. Uh, it varies from set to set, but uh, usually uh, what the service literature will tell you is to, if your set has a horizontal drive adjustment, uh, you'll usually turn it all the way up and then turn it down until what you'll get is sort of like a, a, a vertical line in the picture, uh, like a whitish kind of a ghost uh, vertical line and uh, you turn back the horizontal drive control until that line disappears basically that's kind of the, the layman's way of, of uh, adjusting the, the drive to the horizontal output uh, I'll have to go back and double check that before the set ships out but back to the matter at hand which is width now I'm not seeing any evident width controls we can check the Sam's on this, but uh, I am uh, leaning toward horizontal output tube to also cause a bad, uh, poor, uh, poor width. So let's see if I've got any of those around. All right, I found a RCA 25CD6GB. I think it's the same exact form factor as this tube. I'll cut her off. Give it a sec, this thing's probably hot as a bullet. <laughs> that moment that your flesh sears the, <laughs> the instant you touch the glass is going to be pretty hot. Yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Let's find something that does work. that's actually new old stock. I, it appears to be. Sometimes you get these boxes of tubes and they've actually got the old tubes in them. People bring them in to sell. Oh, they're all new in the box. Uh-huh. I've heard that before. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's give it a go. take a minute to come up to temperature. It's the coldest tube in the set. There we go. Uh, no, we still appear to have a drive issue. Hmm. Pleased to see that we don't have any video problems. All right, let's check out the SAMs on this. Well, I was right about that horizontal drive, uh, vertical in height. doesn't appear that we've got a height or a uh, width control very 
Very curious. Uh, so in a case like this, what I'll typically do is, uh, sorry about that, this thing's supposed to be autofocusing. Come on. All right. Uh, typically what I'll do is uh, I'll look at the main schematic and then try to figure out how the width circuit would work uh, on this. However, this print that I have is missing the schematic page and that's a little irritating. Uh, as I tried to use it when uh, I was going to probe the voltages for the horizontal oscillator. didn't have it. So um, I've got to locate uh, a print, and uh, I've got a couple lines out there. Uh, see if I can uh, get some help on this. But uh, meantime, I think I'm just going to let it run and then see what uh, what that yields us. So that... I'm going to call it good on this, and uh, that'll conclude part one, and we'll come back in part, uh, part two when I have, uh, have the print.